Good morning everybody. You're watching Andy's Fishing Wild Cook. We're out on a hopefully three day adventure. I've got this place to myself. It's um yeah, it's beautiful. Sun's just coming up over here. I'm hoping for crabs, fish, prawns, maybe. Got the, the big duck on the roof. I've got to get that off. I got here last night. It was um, already dark when I got here. Got a bit of prepping to do. Definitely gonna catch a fish. Bunch of different recipes in mind. It's gonna be good and it's good to be back. I'll tell you later on what happened, why I've taken a bit longer than normal to put out a video. See if I can get this off without damaging anything. Oh, it's gonna be a challenge. Oh, that slides easy. There we go. Nothing like a bit of yoga and strength exercises to get the morning started. <laughs> this is gonna be a challenge. Oh. <sighs> That's not light. <sighs> oh, there we go. <sighs> oh, beautiful. One more bit of housekeeping to do, and that's to do with the air conditioner I'm going to use tonight. Those of you that have seen my videos have know what it is, have seen it before. This is so I can charge the battery for the air conditioner. It's got its own battery. All we need to do now is get the crab pots ready because I want to have some crab. And that just plugs in here. Done. Just cooking myself a little breakfast. Could be a bit of a long day. It's um, coming up to high tide, and I want to film some uh, top water action, a bit like the um, yeah the competition I went in. And there's a bunch of shots that I wanted to get that I didn't quite get. So yeah, I'm going to try today. Let's see how full it is. Yep, perfect. <laughs> Few lures. <laughs> I thought my first order of business was to put the crab pots in, but I forgot my hat. So I'm gonna try and find a hat on one of the beaches over here. It's about the only time I've ever wished there was rubbish on a beach. I can't fish all day with no hat. It's just not gonna happen. This is a clean beach, but yeah, I'm gonna try and find a hat. Tide's going out, so hopefully the big duck will be here when I come back. I don't know if there's gonna be much on the on the sandy part of this beach. Hopefully I don't run out of fuel. I've only got one 20 litre tank for that boat as well. Yeah, she's looking like a really clean beach. Oh, I'm already feeling the not wearing a hat. The problem with finding a hat that's washed up and, and like this high up on the beach because the sandy part doesn't have any rubbish on it but um, it's going to be pretty deteriorated. I've actually just had another idea that I could do. I'll have to go back to the boat for that one. We'll keep looking for a little bit longer. It's good to see here, yeah, no rubbish. Beautiful day too. A couple little puffy clouds and yeah. I want to get those crab pots in the water soon as. That was a bit of a failure. Almost no rubbish here, definitely no hat. So my head feels like an egg that's being cooked. Got the forehead here and the sun's just beating right down on it. Did I mention the big duck dinghy was quite easy to get off the roof of the boat? I was quite surprised with that. And when I bought this, $1,200 Australian. So that's like for an inflatable dinghy, that's really, really value for money. And so far, it's only my second or third trip with it now, but it's performing, yeah, really well. Having the paddles attached to the dinghy 
is really handy because they're always there and they stow out of the way really nicely. Tonight we've got chicken thighs as crab bait. I've used them before and they work pretty good. There you go. Today I'm putting the crab pots in the deeper part of the creek because we're leaving them for low tide. Pot number two. So two of them are in this creek and then I've got yeah, at least one other creek to go and have a look at. I couldn't find the gutter I was looking for so I'm just going to chuck it out here. Just out in the middle and then go up the next creek. But I tell you what, I've heard a lot of fish busting up in here. So we might have to have a fish in there and then do the top water a bit later on. You can actually see the bottom here, so I'm going to try and find a gutter that's a little deeper. Okay, this is more like it. We're right on a little gutter that goes up here. Oh, big mullet. Okay. There we go. Just want to show you how efficient this motor is. We're zipping along at, I don't know, maybe 20 kilometers an hour, something like that, maybe 25. And I've only got less than half throttle. That's pretty amazing. So my guess is you could probably plain single person with a six horsepower in this. Pretty cool. It's time to sort out a hat. Seriously can't believe I forgot the hat and that I don't have a spare hat in the boat. So I found this bit of foam here in the boat and that I'm pretty sure it's sitting on the, on the passenger seat of my car because I launched after sunset or, or right on sunset and I'm like I just didn't grab it. Lesson learnt hopefully. <laughs> Mum always did say my head was shaped like an egg. <laughs> I've made it a bit smaller, just so that I don't, don't take too much out. Well, that's not too bad. Okay, let's try her on. I reckon that'll work. I've got extra ventilation through here. Yeah, I'm liking it. Woohoo! <laughs> We're going to fish topwater frogs, uh, weedless, because I want to be able to skip right in amongst all these uh, mangroves. There's actually a pile of bait right there. Water is quite shallow, it's about two foot, which is still plenty. Oh, a bit far away. The idea is to skip them in as far as I can. Oh, got him. Oh, it's like the fourth cast. Oh, fifth. Oh, he's on me, got me. There he is, he's out, he's out. Oh, now he's around a branch. That's a mangrove jack. Oh, we'll have to go and get him. There you go. That's not even two foot here, it's about a foot and a half. And he came out and grabbed it. When I was putting the crab pots in, I actually heard a bunch, and actually there was, there was more over that way, so we're gonna keep fishing a little. Um, but yeah, there should be quite a few mangrove jack along here. Oh, there he goes, he's out. <laughs> Beautiful. Hello, Mr. Jack. Oh, not a bad size either, first fish of the trip. Let's see, he is... Yeah, 33, 34. There he is, beautiful mangrove jack. And don't be afraid to fish shallow stuff like this here. This is where these guys live. And pretty small tides today, so they could be in here all day. Anyway, we'll let him go. Oh, there you go, two more. <laughs> two more mangrove jack just came right from here. That is cool. Hey, go and join your buddies. Oh, there he goes. Oh, he's gone that way. There he is. Ooh. There was two more. Probably just oh, two or three centimeters bigger than that guy. 
cool. And that's really the only way to fish these dense mangroves is you need weedless and I want to fish top water so that's why I'm using the frog. I do want to film some slow motion surface strikes later on. Um, I'm just waiting for the tide to get a little bit lower and then the conditions should be ideal. Did I have a looker? I think I had a looker in there. Let's go to the left. Way under there, I can't even see it. That looked like a fish came and had a squeeze there. Not this time. Yeah, there's a lot of mud here. Something definitely had a look. That's in the back there. You just can't fish those spots with normal lures. There's a little shark. I don't want to catch him, we'll just see if he reacts to the lure. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> oh, that was cool. Looks like this could be Barramundi sort of spot here. Let's see. I have to get it right in there, right amongst the sticks. That'll do it. That's actually through there. Threaded like a needle. Turns out the tide's a bit low for in there. Most of the fish have moved out, so I think we'll hit that tomorrow morning. That should be lots of fun, and yeah, I reckon there'll be some good fish in there. We'll see if we can film some of those surface strikes that I wanted to get for the, um, the film competition. I reckon we will be able to. I'm paddling in for two reasons. One, I don't want to spook too many fish, but two, the oysters are covered in a lot of rocks. So this being an inflatable, I have to be really careful. I was hoping these bits of sand would be big enough, but they're not. So I'm gonna to have to try and stick it on these rocks here that don't have oysters on it. Tide's going down and then turning, so the boat should be fine. Yeah, this looks good. There's a section here with no oysters on it, so we'll go right there. Here's a good sized rock that's not going anywhere. Beautiful. Yep, and that's perfect. First lure I'm going to use is this pink and chrome sugar pen 120. I want to be able to see the lures on the camera and record the strikes. So there's three challenges today. Catch a fish to eat on a top water lure, film it with some good footage, and try not to be spotted with this hat. <laughs> so far there's no one in, in the area, so... And it's, it's actually really cool. It's, when the um, the wind blows through the, the towel, it feels like it's lifting off, but it's yeah, it's really cool. Anyway, we've got a mission to complete. So all I'm taking is my Atomic Arrow seven foot offshore medium heavy, four thousand reel, and a box of sugar pens, various sizes, various colours, and I should be able to get a surface strike somewhere around here. Had a look at there. Okay. Because it's a little bit rough and the water's dirty, I don't think they're going to come up to the surface. I've been fishing two hours with this lure and the water's just too dirty. Now that's part of the reason why I haven't been fishing or filming is because it's been blowing 20 to 25 knots and we've had a lot of rain this year. Um, and I also like to take most of January off to visit my brother, um, my nephews, hang out with them and just yeah, take a break from filming. But yeah, February this year was very windy, very wet. So yeah, the water's too dirty for surface, so I'm gonna go with a Slim Twitcher, I believe that's a 140 in uh, yeah, classic black and gold. Should work in this this color water. 
need food. So I had a look, it's actually a slim twitcher 145. We'll just work our way through this muddy water around these rocks. See what we can get. And the other thing is it's middle of the day and yeah, fish generally don't eat top water that much when the sun's right above the head. Sometimes they do, but yeah, usually it's better in the late afternoon or early morning. Got him, yes! Oh! Mangrove Jack. Oh! Where is he? There he is. Oh, that took a while. Hey? Made, made a bit of a mess of you. There you go, that was about 20 minutes on that, that new lure. The water is very dirty. I'll let this guy go here. Hey, off you go. There you go. <laughs> Yep, you'll find a way. There you go. Well, the lure change worked. Um, yeah, just because of dirty water, it's going to be tough getting getting some food. So we'll see how we go. I'm going to persist. It's about, oh, I'm going to say two or so, maybe maybe three. 2.30? 2.30. Let's go 2.30. I'm going to fish on, try and catch something. When he grabbed it, it was, it was like a flathead take. It, he didn't go anywhere. He just sat there. Maybe because the water's so dirty, I don't know. But yeah, it was very odd. The tide's actually just starting to push in with cleaner water, so we uh, we should get a couple more fish. Let's try it amongst the weed here. Oh. Ooh, big barramundi just swam right past me. Yep, got him. Oh, oh almost pulled me off the rock. <laughs> I do have that set a little bit tight. We got a better Monday, and he's in the weed. Oh, this is going to be interesting. He just literally just swam right past me here. Oh, there he is, there he is. Oh, shit. Oh, here we go. Oh, I better back that off again. Let's see how big he is. How am I going to do this? Wow, okay, let's go through here. Doesn't want to go up that canal. There you go. Come on. Come on. Come on. <sighs> Through this canal. Somewhere I can get to you right here. I can get you there. <sighs> okay, we got him. Oh, Whew. that was a challenge and a half. Oh yeah, that's a decent fish. Get that hook out here. Salty butter Monday, hey? Look at you. Still a quick measurement. Yeah, he's well over 60. So we're taking you, buddy. There we are, beautiful butter Monday off the rocks. Woo! <laughs> oh, beautiful. Got, a, got an interesting recipe I haven't done for a long time. We'll um, yeah, do that with him. Beautiful fish. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll get a proper measurement on him later on. I'll put it up here, but I'm going to say mid 60s, 63 to 65, something like that. Woo! Actually, no, a little bit bigger. Anyway, we'll, we'll measure him. <laughs> I've just taken the barramundi back to the boat and I'm going to have a couple more casts along here. Um, where's all my stuff? <laughs> oh, I just left everything everywhere. That was, um, that was pretty wild. He literally just swam right in front of me and then I couldn't, I couldn't see him. I just went, oh yeah, I think you're going that way. Cast and within, I don't know what, two or three seconds, bang, he was on. And that's why I use these sort of gold lures in this sort of dirty water. The main reason I'm fishing on, I mean, yeah, I, I can't help myself, but the big duck, the dinghy, it's actually high and dry at the moment. So I'm, I'm waiting for the tide to lift it up 
and then I can just hop in it. Whereas I don't want to drag it over all this sort of stuff here to get it in the water. Oh, did you see that mangrove jack? He just cartwheeled out. Let's see if we can catch him. <laughs> oh, right where I was about to cast too. Oh, they're, they're hammering. Oh, that's queenfish there. They're hammering all this bait in here. There's thousands and thousands of little fish right on the surface. I should be able to get something in here. Just because you can see the fish doesn't mean it's always easy. Well, I have to move on. Oh, there's some big fish here. Yeah, oh, big jack, big jack, big jack. Oh, oh. <laughs> Ooh, that is a big fish. <laughs> nice. Oh. oh, he's looking smaller and smaller. <laughs> he just hit me so hard. That was a good fish. <laughs> Oh, just on those little rocks over there. And I do think the, um, yeah, the water coming in and, and being a bit clearer is definitely helping. Come on, let's get you in, buddy. Oh, there he goes. Dropped him. That's all right. I wasn't going to keep him anyway. I've got the barramundi. Let's see. I did, I thought he actually had a friend there. He would have been... 38.40 I reckon Quite a nice fish Don't think I've ever caught them on these rocks here before Yep, oh snap me off No Look at that Go on skis Oh oyster rock I'd say if I look at that So I'm putting a uh, slim twitcher 95 on it's because it's nice and shallow here. Really chromey looking little floor. Don't know what that was. Could have been anything. Um, I think it cut me off on an oyster. So we'll see how we go. I'll just, um, a couple more rocks here and then I've got to go to the boat. I guess I was going to say, who, who likes my hat? <laughs> who thinks it's going to be a new fashion statement? Yeah, it's a little bit tight around around here. A little bit of a headachey sort of thing, because otherwise it'll just blow off. But just look at that, the air is just blowing straight through the top of it. <laughs> anyway, a couple more rocks and then we'll head back to the boat. I've got to have another go here. These are the same rocks that I just got smoked on. My guess is it was a big mangrove jack that did me, but I just don't know. Oh, there goes my hat again. It keeps blowing off. I've got a lure on it so that it weighs it down a little bit, but it doesn't seem to be helping that much. Got him, yes! Oh, I saw him falling. There's another mangrove jack. Oh, on the oyster rocks. Get around. There we go. Oh, stuck. Went up. I mean, I saw him following there. I wasn't going to say anything, but then he grabbed it. So that's cool. There we go. A nice little mangrove jack. He was very grey looking before. Now he's gone a little bit red. Let you go right here. Nice and gentle, hey? Oh, and he's off. See ya. And that, oh, I don't even know where that was. I think it was similar spot to where I got the last one. Dare I say it, one more cast in this spot. It's hard to leave fish when they're biting. Oh, there's another looker. Straight away. He was a nice dark fish, that one. Let's have a go the other side. Very dark fish, that one. Very aggressive. All right. Had a look, had a look. Come on, come on. Oh, he had two looks that one. Oh, not a bad fish either. Oh, right on that rock. I was lifting it up. Let's try that again. I didn't see what it was, but yeah. 
Oh, didn't want it. <laughs> Try the other side. Yep, clean. Oh, little mangrove jack. Oh, how cool is that? I was guessing cod, but yeah, happy. I don't think I've caught a cod today yet. Oh, watch it, fella. Okay, well, oh, and he just flipped out of my hand. Hey, okay, he's good. How is that? Right there. Well, that's where he first hit it. And then he, yeah, came and ate it there. That is wild. That is a foot deep and a meter and a half from shore. Oh, another one, another one. <laughs> there was two more in there. That is just wild. Oh, had another look at there. Oh, right here. <laughs> oh, Jack City. Come on, fella. There he goes. Hey, and he's happy. He's just sitting there. He's actually not swimming away. I can still see his, his back. Come on, you gonna swim out? No, you're just gonna stay there. Yeah, you can see him there. <laughs> that other one was bigger. He was um, near those other two rocks there. Further out, let's see if we can get him to eat. Right about here. Yep, oh, two of them came out. <laughs> I'm being very aggressive here with the, the striking and the bringing them in. Hey, there was two came out then. Let you go as well, buddy. There he goes. There's the new one. Uh, yeah, the other one's still there. This is wild. I'm not even going to turn the camera off. Cast again. Yeah, they're right on this middle rock here, right there. Yep, oh, there's a bigger one. That is a bigger one. Oh, oh that's a cod. Oh, get him out of there. Oh, he swallowed that lure, eh? Oh, no, it's on the side of his face. <laughs> oh, they got it getting in the rocks. Oh, how many fish in one spot? Oh, he's a nice black spot. Nice fish. There we go. Woo! And he's been eating crab. I'll show you in a second. This guy deserves a little glamour shot. Second biggest fish. Oh yeah. He just almost knocked the camera over there. Second biggest fish of the day. Hey? <laughs> and I'll show you what he's got in his mouth. He's got a um, I think it's a stone crab. Anyway, we'll um, pull that out. Oh, stinky. So what happens is they vomit these up and even even if I, look, there he goes, he's throwing it out himself. There you go. That actually, that could be a baby mud crab claw, the way that looks. Yeah, I'm going to say that that could be mud crab. Anyway, we'll let this guy go. I guess he's around 50, yeah, mid, mid, yeah, low, low 50s maybe, something like that. I'll let him go upside down, then he should ride himself and hopefully not splash too much. All right. There you go, buddy. Hey, a little bit shallow. How about I put you... No, you can do it. You can do it. All right, this way. Go this way, fish. There you go. And he's off. Bye-bye. <laughs> Definitely getting a good session now, but I should go back to the boat. I've actually got the barramundi sitting underneath the boat, um, and I'm just worried that a shark's going to come along and eat it. And I just let that cod go. Anyway, yeah, I don't need more fish. Just I just want to have something tonight. You could say I have an addiction because I just can't stop fishing when I'm catching fish. Let's go exactly the same spot again. I dare say that cod stirred them up. No, and another mangrove jack. Oh, there's so many fish in there. Oh, he's only just caught on his gill plate there. He should be able to drop him off real easy. Okay, ready, buddy? There you go. Hey, right. see ya. There he goes. 
Don't warn the others yet. <laughs> oh, what do you reckon? I should have another go? I think I should have another go. It's bizarre. So many fish in one spot. I was struggling early this morning. Oh! <laughs> right behind that little flat rock underwater there. That was not a bad one either. And I'm doing this with a fairly strong drag. Oh! I don't know if they're refusing it or I'm missing the strike, but they're not hooking up. I think they're being a bit wary. Yeah. Oh, that was a couple of nice fish there. They were definitely nice, and I'm literally casting four meters. Oh, another looker. And I got him, got him. Oh, that's going to bust me off. Oh, here we go. Oh, I think I might have just ruined the spot. <laughs> But I didn't want the fish to end up with the lure in him. I just want to release them and catch some more. Oh, I was going to show that one to you, but he just kicked off. He's actually sitting there as well. <laughs> they seem to like this spot. I think there's an undercut in this rock. Oh, man. I, I've lost count. I really have lost count. I am just catching, releasing, catching, releasing. Let's have another go. I'm totally surprised at the, the fact that they just keep whacking it and they just keep coming. Although now I, I'm starting to think this will be it. Definitely nice and I'm literally casting four meters. Oh, another looker. And I got him, got him. Oh, that's going to bust me off. There's a slight chance they've moved from here to here. So we will have a go there. Oh. That is something very large eating a mullet. What is that? GT probably. That was big. Here's the last rock I'm gonna fish today. Looks pretty good. I reckon I could get smoked here. Big undercut on that one on the left. No, nothing there. Well, was that a good session at the end there? I don't know how many jacks. And I had to mention cod, didn't I? <laughs> oh, I would have caught that cod anyway. But decent size. Here you am here. Easy 50. Oh, let's hope that barramundi is still attached to my boat and the boat doesn't have a big hole on it. About a three or four hundred meter walk, maybe, maybe five. But I feel good. I've only just realised that's actually my first barramundi for the year. Not a bad one. Like I said, we've got to go and measure it. And he's um, well over 60. So that's cool. Ooh, interesting shaped rock. Look at that. Bizarre. It's almost like a big stone lure. I'm standing on the lure. Oh, boat's around a couple of corners there. There we go. Dinghy's floating. Our money looks like he's okay. Let's have a look at him. Yep, he's fine. Beautiful. Oh, I couldn't have timed that any better. The boat's floating. The barramundi was um, shielded by any predators. Sometimes the eagles come and um, swoop down as well. That's why I had him underneath the uh, the big duck. Oh, I'm gonna have a big rest for. At least half an hour. <laughs> I don't rest very well. Oh, and then later on we're gonna go check the crab pots. Woo Get away from these oysters. What are you doing? She fell over. Oh. Yeah, it turned out to be quite a long day. Probably 3.30, could even be 4. I started fishing about 9, I think. That's all right, maybe a bit after actually, because you yeah, the hat hat, what do you call it? I don't know, some word. Fiasco, that's the word. The hat fiasco. Got a nice fish. Got a heap of others. Woo. Let's measure Mr. Barramundi. Tail. And 67 centimeters. There you go. Beautiful. Yeah. 
Beautiful fish. I'm feeling a bit weak or faint or something, I think. I might have a bit of heat stroke. I had a look, it's 4.30 p.m. now. Um, and yeah, I'm glad I've got the air conditioner with me, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you a few more features on it. Um, I've gotta cool my body temperature down. That hour, hour and a half this morning with no, no hat on, that was really bad. This is the EcoFlow Wave air conditioner. I've got a couple of extra pipes for it. Um, this is the unit and then this is the battery. The battery turns on like so. We've got a dial here where we can change the speed. 40 degrees, look at that. That's how hot it is right now. Can you see that? 39 Celsius, that is too hot for me. It's not plugged in, you can see that. So the unit comes with a couple of these uh, concertina pipes. This one here, the bottom one, that's actually the suction from the room so if you have the unit in a room in a tent or in a boat you don't need this the top one that's the exhaust that's where all the really warm air goes out i got a couple of extra pipes these i think go to three meters long look at that i can get that hot air blowing all the way out into the atmosphere now don't forget we need our drain pipe here's the drain pipe okay now we're cooking screw that in there Cold air coming straight at me. So there we go. Now we've got cold air blowing and then recirculating into that one. That one works. Now let's see. There we go. I've got a nice snug fit. Beautiful. Close this. We have a nice air conditioned room. I just wanted to show you the app that controls the, the Wave air conditioner. We've got a whole bunch of features here and if you're in a cabin like I am or in a tent and you don't want to go outside, you can increase the fan speed. You can change the temperature. It's lower. Now it goes as low as 16 degrees. That's pretty darn cool. I'll set it back up to 23. It, that displays the temperature it's running at. That's the temperature it's set at. There's also a timer function, 30 minutes, one hour. Yep, you've got a whole bunch of different options there. You've got an eco mode, and then back to cooling mode. And also the battery that comes with this unit is a lithium, and it charges really fast. So that's an added bonus as well. It is so cool in here. I'm gonna transfer some files, and uh, yeah, cool down a bit. I shouldn't be this red color. It's just too much heat. Here's something else. I've got the fan set on eh, three quarters and I can't hear the unit outside at all. And all I've got is, yeah, like a, a sheet of ply and some plastic, plastic boards. That's pretty quiet for an air conditioner. I've transferred all the files and it's still really hot outside. So I'm just gonna lay here for about half an hour and then, yeah, hopefully we've got some mud crab. Sun's about to go down, it's time to get the crab pots. Let's see if we're having crab or fish for dinner. I think, I think I'll cook fish anyway, even if I get a crab. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> I might have both. I'm checking them in the same order that I dropped them in the water. Let's have a look. And, ooh, one big crab with one claw. That's nice, we'll take him. Now, this is gonna be interesting because we're in an inflatable, but I've got my bag here. This is the bag I put crab pots in, and I reckon he'll just crawl in there and hide. Yep, he's in the hole, oh, and he's caught up. There we go, and there we go. Beautiful. Oh, first pot and we've got success. And we'll leave that in for tomorrow. Let's see, pot number two. Lots of mullet there. Oop, ramming speed. Oh, oh let's see. Oh, that was shallow. Yeah, that's no good. Um, might switch sides of the creek. Number three, this is the one out in the open, obviously, because we're out in the open. And, oh, we've 
we've got two crabs. Three. One's definitely a female. Oh, I think those two might be females. That could be a male. So, yeah, they. I think they're females. How are we going to do this? Yeah. <laughs> oh, all I want is one crab to come out. Come on. Come on. Yeah, that's working. Come on. There he goes. Come on. Oh, perfect. Perfect. I'm pretty sure they're going to be females. Yep, both females. You can tell by the the stomach and the um, belly flap, whatever you want to call it. The uh, whatever that is. Come on, girls. Off you go. There you go. One. Come on. There you go. And two. Come on. Come on. Come on. There you go. Oh. Right back where we just caught those ones. Okay. Let's see. Let's see if the last pot's got any. I tell you what, it feels really nice zipping around after the sun's gone down. Temperature's perfect and it's calm as. We got two grabs. Life is good. Now, if you had have asked me which of these pots would have the most or best chance of crabs, I would have said it'd be this one. Let's see if I'm right. We've already got one and three, so it's gonna have to be pretty special. Oh, too fast again. Oh, if there's two good males in here, then yeah, we'll see anyway. And we have absolutely nothing, huh, okay. Leave you in here. I'm pretty sure there's gonna be crabs in here, but yeah, that's um, unexpected. I would have thought uh, that there would be crabs in this spot. Home sweet home. Okay, let's deal with these crabs. I've got to measure them first. I'm pretty sure they're legal, but we got to measure them. Oh, this one's pretty good. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I thought he was being too nice. Oh, this is the big one with the one claw. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, he's, I reckon he's definitely legal. Okay, we got him. Oh, he's a strong crab. Look at the size of that thing. Monster. Tape measure, 19 centimeters across the shell. That is one solid crab. Let's see if he's full. Oh, he feels full. Oh, he's angry. Crab for dinner. Woo! Let's see, while we're holding this one, let's see if we can get the other one out. It's not what I envisaged doing, but. Oh, there he is. I want to measure this guy, see how big he is. Okay, we got him. Oh, again, very strong crab. He looks legal. What do we got? 16 and a half centimeters. Woo, another nice one. I can even get a sunset shot with two crabs. Oh, oh they're not fitting in the frame. I'll have to go back a little bit. How cool is that? Oh, this big one here, that that nipper there, we're going to eat that guy tonight. Oh, beautiful. Woohoo! <laughs> probably my best mud crabbing in a long, long time, probably a couple of years. Look at him. Beautiful. Alrighty. I haven't filleted a fish on camera for a while, so I'm going to do this one. Just get right in, right where the dorsal spines are. Go over there, little bit. There we go. And then skim right over the top of the rib cage. There we go. Beautiful. 
So once again, I've got half salt water, half fresh water in there. Boil and 10 minutes. Okay, that's been 10 minutes. Crab should be done. Oh yeah, that looks good. Big claw looks even better. Now I could just eat crab, but I've got a cob of corn. I'll give that a steam in the same water. See what that works out like. It could be interesting. Can't believe it's 8.30 already. The crab is still a little bit too hot to eat, but that's not gonna stop me. Look at that. Mmm, smells good. I've just got the corn going for like, I don't know, six minutes or something like that. Waiting for the crab to cool down. Mm, but I may as well start. Yeah, I don't know where the time goes. Um, yeah, I fished from like nine till four or something like that. Yeah, maybe a bit later. And then I did spend about an hour and a half in the aircon. Um, and then it was right on sunset and got the crab. So yeah, I filleted the, the fish and I cooked the crab and yeah, time has just disappeared. Mmm. Mm. That muscle is like nice and firm. It's yeah, it's really, really wholesome. Mm. The the other reason I cook this crab tonight, other than look at the size of that nipper. <laughs> that is that is a monster nipper. Uh, it's got to be one of the biggest nippers I've ever seen. Um, and yeah, 19 centimeters, that's a pretty big crab. Um, yeah, to try and like tie him up and put him in the esky, uh, in the fridge, gonna be a bit of a pain. Whereas the other one was a little bit smaller with two, two claws. And yeah, he, he, um, he was no problem at all. Mm, I won't bore you with all this. I'll, um, I'll show you the claw, I'll crack that open before I go to bed. But yeah, I'm pretty excited for tomorrow because I've got that whole barramundi frame. I thought about putting it in the pots tonight, but if something, oh, there's the, the corn. Um, turn that off. Yeah, if something happens in the dinghy um, with the motor and I can't find the boat, it's just not a good idea. Look at that, that is just chockers. Mm. All right, the corn's done. So even, see that, that part there on the, on the swimmer? Most people don't worry about that, but I just, I just like it so much. It's um, really sweet. Mm. That one's a bit salty, mm, but still nice. And all these, all these little joints. Just give them a little crack, pull them open. That last joint was really, really sweet. It's funny how, yeah, that part of it was salty, and then the previous one. Mmm, yep, oh. Almost tastes like sand crab, that bit. I think this warrants a little celebratory drink. I haven't um, had port for a long time, and crab and port, I think it goes together. Cheers, everybody. <laughs> Oh, finally got a couple of good crabs. And yeah, really good fishing today as well. Hmm. Mm. Ah, very sweet, that. Mm. I'm gonna eat the rest of that. Thought I'd show you one more leg. I sort of, I just, I just sort of twist them and pull them out of the socket. Oh, I think that's gonna lose all the meat, that one. No, oh, no, there's a chunk of meat. Really nice, nice chunk of meat. So good having crab, and it's um, it's so nice being back out here. It's been way too long. And I was just watching the moon before. I think it was a planet, maybe two planets right next to each other, setting. And you don't you don't see that when you're at home. You have your TV on, you have your lights going everywhere, and you just just don't pay attention. Okay, here's the claw. There's still a 
heck of a lot of meat on there. Mm. So good. I'm just going to use a um, pair of muffs, earmuffs, for washing the motor. Because I don't want to break anything else. <laughs> this, um, this shell looks pretty hard. Let's have a look inside. There we go. And yeah, she's about 80% full. There we go. There you go. Big chunk of meat. Most people actually prefer the claws. I This is my least favorite because they're usually a bit bitter, not as sweet. Yeah, that one's not too bad. Hmm. My favorite is, yeah, the legs. I have a critter in the boat. I have to get rid of him. Mm. Before I leave you, let's try this corn. It was cooked in the same juice that the crab was cooked in. It smells just like corn to me. Tastes just like corn. Mmm. <laughs> I left the, um, the sheath on, the skin. Doesn't taste anything like crab at all, so yeah. That's a good use of, of secondary water. It's gotta be after nine o'clock at night now. So yeah, I'm gonna leave it there, guys. Hopefully I'll see you tomorrow in the next episode. Should be interesting. It's gonna be really calm. That's the forecast anyway. Catch you then. If you're still here, I've picked out a special video just for you. Check it out.